Um, next on our agenda today, uh, we're going to be hearing from a few uh, trailblazers in the digital asset industry. Uh, we have amongst us a few really, um, really strong and interesting founders. Uh, and the panel that's going to be led by Michael Gord um, is on digital assets to watch in 2021. So we're really going to be hearing a discussion about um, pushing the boundaries, taking digital asset technology to market globally, um, and how the you know, various panel participants are doing so uh, through the use of their own technology and approach to the uh, rapidly emerging industry. So uh, Michael, I will, uh, I'll let you kick it off and, and take over the panel. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. And thanks, Rajiv, Raul, and uh, Humayun for, for joining us. It's exciting to, to have you all here. Um, so this conversation is going to be about digital assets that we are excited about, that we are invested into. Uh, and we're hearing from the founders or uh, the um, executive team of some of the most exciting networks that we're seeing in, in digital assets today and how these founders are pushing the needle in terms of uh, mainstream adoption for digital assets. So uh, today we have Raul Milhado, who's the CEO and the founder of the Elidium Network. Uh, we have Rajiv, who is the head of research of the XCB Foundation, um, the governing organization of the Digital Bits Network. And we have uh, Humayun, who's the CEO and the founder of Fetch.ai, which is incorporating AI in the blockchain uh, right. in new new disruptive ways. Um, all of these uh, all of these leaders of the blockchain movement are coming from very different perspectives. Um, uh, so I'm excited to to hear from from all of you today. Um, I think let's let's start with just backgrounds and. Uh, sharing with the audience what you all are working on and um, how you got started with blockchains. So Raul, do you wanna, you wanna start? Yeah, why not? Thanks, Mike. Um, great to be here. And uh, it, was, it was definitely a pleasure to, to watch the other panels. I try to watch as, um, as, as possible, but uh, busy days. Um, Tomorrow, uh, we'll, meet, we'll meet you, Mike, in Dubai. Looking forward to that as well. But um, great to be here. A bit of background about, my, about myself. I've been a, an entrepreneur for about 10 years, always been active in the tech space. Um, and then at one point, uh, four years ago, I invested into a startup, Airbnb, for yachts and boats. And I became a managing partner. And one of the innovations we did back then, um, like three, three and a half years ago, we started to accept cryptocurrencies as a payment method for, for the yachting business. So, and that was the first moment I, I, I saw the gap, right, between the old financial world, the yachting world, and the world of, of cryptocurrencies. And basically, uh, since then, we started to, uh, to yeah, join the, the revolution of finance 3.0. And we started with crypto payments, then we started to test with smart contracts. But today we have built a crypto a wealth management platform where we basically offer anything from DeFi uh, saving programs to investing in art through NFTs, uh, to cryptocurrency staking and masternodes, basically all in one platform. And, and again, back to the world where I'm coming from, the yachting world, the, the, the investor world uh, that I've been active in all of, the, in all of in all those years, we're now building the bridge between the old financial um, audience with the new world um, finance 2.0, as, as we call it. And we're building that bridge by developing this, uh, this platform. And we have developed it and it's going live in uh, next week, in next week, actually. So basically, um, yeah, that's a bit of background, but I'd love to talk about a bit more in detail when we, when we come back to me, to me in a later stage. But um, yeah, it's very excited to see that before, if you look at the past few years, that it was quite difficult to pitch your idea or pitch your, you know, the, the, um, the blockchain project that you're working on. And nowadays, like even my grandmother during Christmas asked me if, if, if she should buy Bitcoin or not. So that was the moment you, you realize that things are very hot. And I think it's, it's such an exciting time to see that basically what you've been working on for years and years that now, you know, everybody wants to join. And in our case, we have built that platform, that all-in-one platform where 
we can onboard all of these, you know, family office and high net worth individuals uh, one by one by one. So that's the first introduction. Thanks, Raul. Uh, and Rajiv, you're coming from a, a bit of a, a different different side of the industry rather than wealth management. Uh, you're focused on uh, adoption through branded branded currencies, branded stable coins, and, and the digital bits network. Um, you, you mind just sharing a background on uh, on yourself, how you got into blockchains, and uh, and on digital bits? And yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Michael. I actually am. A, I have to give a huge shout out to a good buddy of mine, Tom, Phil McNamee. So he was he was pestering me about blockchain for probably about four or five years. Um, and I was, uh, I was on the tail end of studying accounting and finance. Um, and I think I was taking one particular course and it was, um, uh, it was throwing me for a huge loop. I was getting frustrated. So I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe after all this time, I'm going to take a look into what Phil's been talking about. And I think that's one of the coolest things about the technology. It's so intoxicating. Like you start diving in and then you can't really stop. You start to see the applications and kind of how it can make people's lives better, how it can, how it can make things that you do every single day, a little bit more efficient. Um, and it was down the rabbit hole um, from there. Um, and then obviously coming on board with the XBB Foundation and whatnot. Um, so I think what we're doing is, is really interesting. We're, we're addressing this idea of branded currencies, branded stable coins. Um, and there's something that, that have been around um, for, for generations really. You can go back to ancient Egypt and there was forms of branded currencies and they were just little, little tokens and tidbits that would help people to further engage. And kind of moving past that, we see it's a really, really vibrant ecosystem now. Um, it drives consumer behavior. It, it gets people to, to, it rewards people for their behavior and whatnot. And I think um, through blockchain and through tokenization, we can make these systems even more efficient. Um, and that doesn't even begin to touch on this whole aspect of NFTs that I think it's gonna add an additional layer on top of everything. It's gonna become even more personable, even more um, immersive. Um, so yeah, really excited for what's to come. Thanks Raul. And, uh, and Humayun, you're, you're also coming from a, a very different perspective with bringing uh, AI into the mix. So uh, I'd love for you to share uh, how, how you got started and um, how, how you're focusing on, on blockchains and, and AI. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the, uh, for, for the intro and really happy to be here and really pleased to be here. Uh, my background is a bit buried. I have, uh, I've been trading commodities for the last 15, 20 years. Um, and I've been also involved in technology, creating algorithms for commodity trading. And I've been involved in a, a co company, AI company called DeepMind, uh, which sold out to Google five or six years ago. So I was one of the first uh, investors and I was also uh, actively involved in actually actually um, commercializing the technology that we were building there. Um, I, wasn't, um, I, I wasn't particularly just in technology. I was more commercial technology, um, more um, applications, so applied technology and applied AI. So that's uh, kind of the background. And um, I've, I've had multiple businesses where uh, some of them have been sold. Some of them are currently operational. Uh, I sit on uh, the board uh, of a couple of them. Um, but what, what was quite interesting uh, was uh, three years ago when we actually started thinking about Fetch AI, um, it, it was quite, um, quite a new uh, model which we wanted to bring in to the market. How do you actually bring uh, decentralization, uh, liberation of AI rather than uh, locking this whole huge data sets in big corporations, how can you make it accessible to everybody? How can you make it very easily deployable? What you'll find quite interesting is that blockchain actually, as much as inefficient for AI it is, it's very good for consensus. And uh, for multi-stakeholder consensus, um, we're building this framework which enables you to, to collaborate on machine learning and AI. And that's really the key of uh, Fetch AI. Uh, we, we're looking at perhaps uh, at the moment, the first step is generally always financial. So you actually do transactions and settlement of transactions, but then you will actually start looking at the commercialization. So 
why do you get to the point of making payments? You know, what is the business models you can actually build on top of it? So we're focused on those business models and how we can deploy it. And so our technology is the framework where you can actually build decentralized um, businesses, where you can actually build decentralized um, machine learning and AI, which can be used for those businesses. So that's really the background, myself and the company. Thanks to Mayan. Um, so yeah, very, very interesting backgrounds from all of you. Um, and, and, and as, as mentioned, we're, we're all looking at the industry from, from different perspectives here. Um, so I think that it would be interesting to, to consider now as blockchains are, um, without question blowing up across all categories and across all industries. Um, I, I'd love to discuss with all of you in your different niches, the, the types of conversations you're having, having now and how those conversations have changed from, uh, from when you first got into the industry um, with, with all of you a couple years ago. Yeah, I can, I can, take, lead, I can take the lead there um, because I, I was actually <clears throat> addressing this in my, in my introduction as well, right? So when, when we started uh, four years ago with implementing crypto per, cryptocurrency as a payment solution in the yachting business, everybody was, you know, was very surprised, right? They, they, um, and then secondly, what the, what the second point, the second innovation was that we were going to integrate smart contracts into, into the business. And we were way too early. And what my point is, we've been involved in tokenization for about two years. We've been speaking to the biggest and largest hotel groups in the world. And what I see is basically like, it's not about the technology, but it's also about is the industry and is the market ready for it, right? So what you see now happening with the NFT market is great for the future of tokenization and future of uh, <coughs> securitization because people start to become equivalent with the fact that you can start to become a fractional owner or an owner through you know this kind of technologies, mainly now with art. And obviously, Elitim is, is doing uh, doing something great in, in this field as well. So we are. We are joining that that hype, but what I would love to see is that this hype will not just be in hype, like you saw with ICOs and that you saw with, you know, many things like staking and notes. Like th these are all crypto hypes. But at one point, after all of these years of development and all of these different tools that people are developing, it comes together in final solutions, and those will be implemented in certain industries, and those industries will change forever. So. What I'm seeing now is there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of you know, use cases being created. And what our goal is as well, not just as a lithium, but also as a, you know, from an industry perspective is that it's not just gonna be in hype anymore, but basically that um, these technologies will be implemented into the real estate markets, uh, into the art market as is happening right now, into basically the crypt cryptocurrency is going to replace uh, current uh, digital sorry current money system so to answer your question i see that there is like an ongoing growth of of development and now finally after after all those years we see that these you know development um developments now turning into real real use cases and that's i think where we're now in a tipping point that the majority of the mass and I'm talking not just about uh, the individual investor, I'm talking about professional investors, family offices, institutions, they start to realize, right? They start to realize it's not just a hype, it's not just uh, one day fly, this is really changing the world. And that's why I'm now having much better conversations with you know, investors and partners and institutions because now everybody wants to participate and, and join uh, based on the on these on these developments, yeah, I, I think I think I totally kind of uh, agree with Raúl there. I think you raised a very interesting point. If you uh, your grandmother is asking for bitcoins, uh, this is the signs of um, it, you know as much as we don't want it to be, it could be a sign of this tech bubble which 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 existed in the past as well. Um, so again, just to kind of emphasize the point, it's um, 
it's all great when you have these hypes and you have these little bubbles. But I think if, if this um, proper sustenance has to happen, if you need to maintain this actual deployment and actual uh, uptake of the technology, what needs to be looked at is where is the real use case coming from? And if we can, um, you know, especially if the, if the investors, the family offices could look at uh, where the real value will be generated ultimately, uh, then it's not just a flash in the pan, it will be more sustained then, then I think we have a less of a chance of that kind of tech bubble type uh, scenario where you know everything is just hype and once it's gone everybody loses the money. I think that's something which as a community, as a community which is supporting blockchains, uh, cryptocurrency, we have to be kind of very aware and actually make a conscious effort not to kind of let that happen too much because um, that could result you know, in, in, the, in the wrong way. Yeah, before I review, you guys, I, I would certainly agree. There's a there's a ton of hype uh, right now, but um, where I see a big difference between the market today versus the previous bull run in uh, in 2018 is that uh, this time the hype is backed by products that are coming to market getting real world adoption by big multinational not i mean not in always but up to the biggest multinational institutional corporations in the world uh looking to adopt the technology that we are building and taking to market so i, I certainly agree with the hype um but I, i'm really excited about how how this time the hype seems to be supported by real world use cases um so, so Rajiv, perhaps uh, con considering that uh, I, you know, we've all obviously worked pretty closely together. The Digital Bits mainnet um, coming out quite recently is a is a huge milestone for for Digital Bits. Um, it would be great for you to share with the audience uh, the, how the conversations have ch and you've been involved in Digital Bits from the very beginning. Um, would be interesting for you to share how the conversation has changed over the years from the uh, uh, you know theoretical conversation to the uh, in in process of being built conversation to now mainnet is live there is a real ability to deploy mainnet applications uh, and how the conversation is changing with uh, with the organizations um, that are building on digital bits yeah no of course um, and I think it's this, this general idea of where on a, on a more public scale where we're moving from this idea of blockchain being very cool and very innovative and like think about all these things we can do to to look at at what we're doing right um i think um when digital first came out a few years ago the concept of having tokenized points and having this this giant digital economy of all these different branded currencies kind of interacting with one another it was, it was cool in concept, but there was obviously further questions as to, okay, cool. So, well, why would a company want to accept someone else's points or like um, just this is neat because I'd be able to get rid of my, my excess cash, but where do we really go with this? And then kind of over the years, we've, we've developed this idea of branded stable coins and whatnot. Companies uh, collateralizing the reserve cash, issuing a branded stable coin on chain and benefiting from all the things in addition to that, right? So an enhanced um, consumer experience, being able to hold actual dollars in their account, building in loyalty features directly onto it. Um, I think that that really is it. It's moving from concepts and cool ideas and all the things that we can do to like, this is actually gonna change the way in which we do things. So not to, to rope it back to NFTs, but I think this is, this is a really cool idea. Like where when NFTs kind of hit the forefront in 2017, 2018 with crypto kitties, it was like, oh, cool, we can breed digital cats. But but what does that really do? It's a it's a cool proof of concept, right? Um, but now we're seeing um, musicians coming out and issuing these unique digital assets that are actually enhancing the connections that they have uh, with their fan base and whatnot. That allows them a medium to to do exclusive drops or heighten engagement or different activations and whatnot. And I think this is really cool kind of for the space that we're working in, because um, if you think of loyalty, you think of gaming and whatnot, everything that adds value is making the experience more personable. 
right? And making it more individualistic. Like how do you set yourself as a participant away from someone else? Like you're no longer just a platinum rewards member. You are the 50th ever within this program. And, and people feel good about that, right? People like feeling recognized for their, for their engagement. And um, yeah, I think, I think we're this whole idea that we're moving to a spot where this is going to add real world value as opposed to just being something neat. Thanks, Rajiv. Um, so yeah, super exciting positioning for, for all three of your companies. Um, the partnerships that you guys are introducing are, are all uh, very significant and, and really moving the needle, not just for your firms, but for the whole blockchain industry. Uh, maybe starting with, uh, with Humayun this time, um, you want to talk about how quickly you think mainstream adoption is going to happen for Fetch and what you anticipate the catalysts to be? Yeah, so uh, I think I think adoption is happening right now, which is which is very interesting. Um, we the some of the solutions that we're building could apply actually quite interestingly in the hospitality sector. And if you look at um, the, this this disaggregation or disintermediation, uh, which blockchain and cryptocurrency brings, uh, that's a that's a huge value addition for the the hospitality sector, which is kind of struggling at the moment. Uh, this whole COVID scenario actually is a catalyst, effectively, for what we're doing. Um, people people are looking to save uh, money. People are looking to improve their profitability. And um, what Fetch is building for the hospitality sector just enables you to do that. It kind of says, okay, you know, we, we're going to connect the consumer and the supplier um, and connect them together without the need for this uh, huge corporation uh, kind of, uh, which, which aggregates all the data. So that's what it's, you know, very specifically, that's what Fetch is enabling um, companies to do. Um, via blockchain, via cryptocurrency, because you you can you can um, connect with your uh, consumer, the, your customer directly. You can share that information directly. The technology enables you to do that. But also on top of that, you can actually exchange. You can actually settle payments, which 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 is now a fairly mature technology actually in terms of cryptocurrency, in terms of blockchain. So that layer of settlement actually enables you to build these new businesses on top, um, which, which actually are coming online, uh, from, from my expectation, actually coming online quicker than I thought. Um, but this is happening right now in our sector, in, in where Fetch is targeting uh, the technology, we are seeing adoption right now. So, so from our side, that's, that's, that's great news. Um, maybe Rahul, you wanna you wanna share your perspective there on how quickly you expect adoption to happen, um, and I, I think also an interesting thing to to touch on is comparing Elidium uh, and and digital bits and fetch to the traditional um, software that is used by wealth managers. Um, sharing your perspective on the speed of adoption but also um, the, the significant competitive advantage, um, you know, I think it would be worthwhile to, to talk about that. For sure. So I think a few, few developments of the past year are uh, helping significantly with the um, mass adoption that's taking place right now. If you look at the fact that because of the pandemic, they had to increase the uh, money supply with almost 40%. That means that companies like, you know, uh, Tesla are now putting their money, their treasury money into, into Bitcoin, right? So that's a big trend. I see that happening very soon with bigger companies, maybe even Apple, right? So because the, basically in, because of inflation, uh, you know, your money has less value. So people start to look for alternatives. So that's one big trend that's happening right now. Um, and that's not just with, with you know, in the first place, it was with people. So they start to look into to, uh, stock market, they start, start to look into crypto. So that's helping a lot. On the other hand, because of these facts, I believe that there will be uh, very soon will be, a, you know, there will be digital dollar, there will be blockchain from the government. So there will be a lot of different opportunities for people to make a choice, right? Do I follow the, the government programs or do I take some risk and go for alternatives? 
what we see when we talk to um, professional investors, when we talk to um, capital partners, when we talk to our investors, we, we, we found out that there, there are three problems. And three problems was the first one is the uh, regulatory side of things. So, you know, they, they want to work with a regulated company because otherwise they don't trust it, right? So the second part is the security, right? What's, what's the security behind it? Who's the custody partner? Like, you know, is there an insurance? And the third one is where the hell do I start, right? All of these companies, they hear about NFT and uh, DeFi. And then they, they, before, of course, they heard about staking and crypto. So they don't know where to start. And that's basically what we have been developing with Elithium. Our platform basically is now designed for the uh, traditional professional investor and the, the hedge funds and the family offices. And what we do is basically we do, um, yeah, we have basically more exclusive approach. So it's not open. It's not for like Nexo or Binance where you can just create an account and enter. Basically what we are doing is we uh, make it very personal. So we do, do an onboarding call. You have to go through an extensive uh, onboarding uh, procedure. And then you basically, you know, you're being selected as one of the capital partners to join the platform. And then we have insurance because that's what people are looking for. They want to be insured. So we do decentralized finance, DeFi insurance with, with the right partners so that we can go up to 80% of your funds are being fully secured and, and insured. Uh, I, I mentioned the support thing. So we have 24-7 support, right? Because people want someone on the other line. If there's a problem with their money, and it's usually about a lot of money because the minimum is 25K, but people will be spending a lot of money using these platforms. They want that there is someone on the other side of the phone picking up the phone saying, hey, I got a problem with my, with my you know, my deposit or with my transfer, what's going on? And that's missing in crypto, right? There's no, no, no real like team behind it that's taking full responsibility. And that's what we're doing. We're tackling all of these problems, all the problems that I just mentioned. And we, we basically, like I said earlier in my introduction, building that bridge. So the, the, the old financial world, the Wall Street guys, they want to enter DeFi. They want to enter NFTs and cryptocurrency market. We bring them all to our, our platform and we have the full uh, team that support them to you know, answer all the questions, take away all the barriers and make sure that they can invest safely into the new space. And I think that's that's why what's needed and there is not not a platform doing that yet or a company doing that yet and i think that's and i think that's what 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 the other guys mentioned as well we need use cases we need companies that can show that you know they can be trusted and there has to be um an improvement in in the form of security that if you know these institutions and these professional investors start to invest millions of dollars start to allocate that into cryptocurrency and the, and the other forms of, uh, of, of, of uh, blockchain investments, they need to be sure that their money is safe, right? And that's, I think, where we're in right now. Uh, more and more companies start to, to really build a uh, sustainable model and a strong model, and yeah, we're, we're basically one of them. Thanks, Raul. And, uh, and, and Rajiv, it would be great to hear your perspective on um how digital bits is uh, or the speed that you anticipate mainstream adoption of digital bits having and uh and the the value proposition um i guess compared to traditional loyalty programs of multinational enterprises and uh, i guess using fiat currency for sure so i think um one on a general scale um the rate of adoption is going to continue to increase and i think that's because of two things one confirmation and that's like we, we have this constant call for kind of institutions to come into space. And I think the reason being is because you, you have this confirmation from notable entities that this technology is here to stay, that it's functional, that it's, it's going to change lives and whatnot. Um, but we're seeing it even past that. We're thinking, seeing it from celebrities and kind of people you walk day by day, like people are talking about this more and more. And I think that gives people more confidence. Um, and then on the other side, there's the ease of use. Um, and I think that's um, coming from two facets. One from the consumer side of interacting with applications, whatnot, it being a little bit less scary. Things are a lot cleaner now. You can go in, you know exactly what to do. 
Um, and then also from the brand and enterprise side, it's I, it's becoming easier and easier to deploy solutions on the blockchain. So that kind of leads me into my next point with um, with Digibit's uh, mainnet upgrades going live. Uh, we're going to be able to see this kind of more and more. Um, so like we have a big shout out to one of our partners, Stably, who makes it very easy for brands or enterprise to come in, um, deploy a stable coin solution um, on chain to, to the network or the ecosystem and have that begin to circulate and whatnot. Um, we also have another ex- upcoming uh, partnership that we is looking to integrate us into a network of significant global enterprises. That's going to allow clients access to out-of-box um, solutions that they can build on digital bits. And I think this idea that you can come, you don't have to build out a blockchain arm to your company, but you can easily come in and be like, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to leverage blockchain technology. I want to give it to my users, my consumers and whatnot in order to make the, kind of their lives better and what they're doing easier. Um, I think successfully implementing these things is going to skyrocket the rate of adoption that we see. And it's not necessarily going to be people explicitly using blockchain, but it's going to be in the back end optimizing what they do. Definitely. Um, so we've, we've, just got a, we've just got a couple more minutes. Um, maybe back to, back to Rajiv and then let's, uh, let's go around. Um, is there any exciting, I mean, there, there's, uh, for sure, super exciting developments across all three of your organizations. Um, would love for you guys to share anything that you're comfortable with that is, uh, you anticipate coming to market in the foreseeable future. And maybe Rajiv, you want to start? Yeah, cool. So I'll jump in. Um, so obviously kind of bring you note to this upcoming partnership, uh, be announced within the next few days to weeks. And like I said, this is going to help um, integrate us with significant global enterprises and allow people to deploy solutions on blockchain a lot more easily. Um, but yeah, no, just like super excited to see the developments in the space. Um, obviously we're looking very closely at NFTs and how that's going to enhance the user experience, uh, both within loyalty and within gaming. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a very exciting time. And uh... Raul, what about, what about you? Anything that is uh, exciting that you'd like to share with the audience now? Uh, absolutely. After, <clears throat> after three years uh, developing the, the final product, the wealth management platform, it's going live in one week. Uh, we start to onboard in, in, in basically in different rounds. So um, we will onboard the first 50 investors in, uh, in April. And from there, we start to grow the pools. Um, I'll be heading to Dubai tomorrow, so to see you there at the Family Office Summit. So this will be uh, will be great as well. And very soon, we can mention uh, we can basically announce a big partnership uh, on the art NFT side with you guys. So there's some some cool stuff happening. Um, so the launch of the platform, the NFT marketplace, and some really really cool stuff uh, will happen in the next few months, basically. Very cool. Thank you, Raul. And, uh, and, and Humayun, um, anything that, uh, that you'd like to share with the audience that uh, you're excited about for Fetch to come to market with? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we are launching our uh, mainnet version 2, uh, end of this month, 31st of March, which we are really, really excited about. And the reason is you talked about adoption and we are onboarding some uh, really uh, big enterprises who are joining our validator network. So we've, we've already announced uh, Bosch and Festo in, in Germany, and we will be announcing several others over the next couple of weeks. Uh, what is quite different here is, um, as you said, uh, it's adoption. So these are enterprises who exist currently in the market who are now coming on board with a chain which they feel comfortable with and they feel that they can actually build different applications on top of it. So uh, the next uh, couple of months, again, are going to be very exciting for Fetch as well. And we will be deploying some commercial uh, applications uh, soon after we release our mainnet launch. You're mute, Mike. You're mute. Uh, I'm on mute. Um, thank you, Humayun. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we're just coming up to 
the end, but I realize that there is a clubhouse breakout session happening now. So if uh, if anyone from the audience has any questions for Rajiv, for Raul, or for Humayun, um, maybe let's hang out for 30 seconds and see. Okay, awesome. And uh, just to that effect, we put a, um, a breakout session link in the, uh, the chat here. So you're all welcome to join and we can have a more open discussion with some of the panelists, moderators, um, and, and respective team members there. And we encourage you guys to come back to this link. Uh, we'll be kicking off again at 1.25 uh, with the next panel on digital asset exchanges and the evolving landscape. So, um, I guess, Mike, maybe start with some questions if anyone has for the panelists that are up here right now, uh, and we can begin to enter that breakout room. Um, yeah, thanks, Zach. Uh, I guess but before we before we drop, we have one question from Rajitha. Uh, maybe let's just go around. If there are any exciting project, any exciting digital assets that, uh, that the three of you see that are... Um, not represented on this panel uh, that you that you'd like to share with the audience. Uh, Humayun, any any thoughts there? Uh, well, I, I guess um, th there is my uh, leaning towards is more towards um, applications which which are coming and playing a role in it really quite of um, in, in adoption. So in terms of that, I think uh, there is a there's a um, I, 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 I think Binance Smart Chain, which is the BNB side of thing, uh, has a lot of room to grow um, because the deployments are real. Uh, there is real momentum behind it. So I'd say uh, keep, a, keep an eye out, apart from Fetch AI, which, uh, which is represented here. Um, I would say BNB is a good, uh, is a good asset. Thanks, Humayun. And, uh, and what about you, Raul? Um, well, I think in, in general, I think Humayan is right. Um, I think Binance is a great platform to look at. They, they keep coming with new uh, functionalities and uh, investment opportunities. So if you're new to the market, or if you're looking for opportunities, um, although they are sort of competitors, I always said, say go to Nexo and go to Binance. There is such a, it's a fun way of investing and there's so many you know, new models coming out from leverage token to um, liquid swap. And like, you know, these, these are interesting ones and, and Binance will keep growing. On the other hand, of course, we um, with the lithium will also have way more unique offerings. So I think it's, it's, it's more or less, you know, going to the check out the main platforms out there and they, they keep offering innovative, you know, innovative, the uh, innovative uh, innovative, sorry, uh, offerings, and uh, that would be my main tip. Uh, check out the, the main platforms and uh, do your research and, and, and uh, yeah, start to explore. Yeah, I think I'm, uh, so the, the DeFi space is obviously very, very interesting. Um, one that's always stood out to me is Aave, um, and mostly because of their introduction of credit delegation. Um, I think in order to make um, like DeFi, decentralized borrowing and lending a lot more effective, I think the 150% collateral requirements that we see is very prohibitive, especially to the people who could benefit from it the most. So the ideas of credit delegation and other systems in which that you can bring down those collateral requirements and make capital more available to people. Um, I think those will be really interesting to see, um, especially getting capital into the hands of people that need it most. I think there, there's a question from uh, Harish. I just sent my email, so maybe just reach out to me so we can all meet up with Mike and myself in Dubai and, and see what we can do on the event as well. Uh, so if you just email me, then I can share my number and then uh, we can get in touch. So I hope that answers your question. It's a physical event, not a digital one. I just shared it here. I'll do that again. So yeah, the question is answered as well. Uh, Raul, you're you're sharing two panelists, not attendees. You just have to change the settings. Yeah, I'll do that. That's why. Okay, uh, I'll do that. Let me see where I can do that. Can you do it, Zach? I don't know where. Let me see. Uh, Raul, I just I just sent it. 
Um, and thank you all, and, and Harish, uh, we'll make sure that uh, that you get connected with Raul and, and we'll coordinate uh, a time to meet in Dubai. Um, but yeah, Raul, Rajiv, and Humayun, thank you all very much for uh, taking the time to participate. Um, I, I definitely had an exciting time uh, speaking to you all, and I, I look forward to seeing all the developments for Elidium, for the XD Foundation, and for Fetch in the coming uh, months and years. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Michael. Pleasure. Yeah. Nice to meet Cheers. you guys.